because and I'm also going to start sharing. So can you see my screen now? Yeah. Can you see my screen now? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to create a fresh water project. Uh, so I'm going to close this folder. Uh, so let me let me create a new photo project. So I'll open it coming up here. I need to so essentially what I'm trying to do currently, I will just try and show you what I'm trying to do. So this uh this is where I'm trying to go to. So this is my home, this is my project. So here, just you you should look at this place and see what's going to happen. So projects let me see if i can reduce this window so. uh, let me try and shut this down okay yeah so if i do hello hello can you hear me okay so see the i want to go into my project folder and that's this folder here this particular folder here is projects so projects uh, so i want to create a new flutter project so i'm going to do flutter create flutter create uh, example api i'll call it that's the name of the app example underscore api and if I click on enter, you'll see that it's going to actually create another folder here. So you see it's this example API now. So I'll finish doing that. So to actually like use the project. Like you can do this, so you can do this. So or you can't you can actually like just click on open folder, or you click on open folder, you then go to projects, then you then go and click on example API. But since I don't want to do that, I can just do this. I can just do it like this. That's it, I have the project here available. So we are going to be talking about futures. And I don't know if you have any questions on futures you actually want to ask before I start working on the project itself. Hello. Yeah, I'm 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 listening. I'm. I want to I want to know if you have any questions you want to ask on future. Oh, right. right. Um. Uh, um. You've created the new uh uh API, so I'm. Just, I I'm just watching you, just trying to learn as you go. I guess. Uh, Okay, so I will just I'm just going to continue that. So we want to we want to create a, a project. So first of all, we're going to we're going to actually like look for an API you want to use. So I think news API, uh, news API, not that's news API, news API. Aha, this one is where we actually want to go to. So yeah. So, uh, because uh, okay. I need to get my API key from news API. So this is the API key they're giving to me. Well, news API actually like provides the API key for you already. Like if I go to their homepage, I'll find out that uh, it's actually added here now. This is it here, the same API key. So this is about Tesla's. This is news about Tesla's. So I want to see news about Tesla. So currently, I don't have I don't have um, the package, the extension I was using when I made the when I made um, the tutorial. So my API is going to be yeah, it's going to look like this. Not, not, not this oh. Yeah, it it actually looks messy. Like API when you actually like look at API API responses, it actually like looks uh, really, really messy. So I don't know, why is, why is my browser not responding? Okay, yeah, it's actually responding. Excuse me. It's actually, okay, it's responding. So yeah, so this is what it looks like. Well, let me get the uh, extension I got. Uh, I was actually using uh, JSON formatter. The name of the JSON formatter. Um, 
So not that. So this is actually chrome.google.com, and that's the extension itself. That's um, the name of the extension. So uh, we're going to add it to my current browser. is called Brave. I'm not using Chrome. It's called Brave, and this is the this is the symbol for it. This Chrome for this Brave, this Brave web browser. So I'm adding it to Brave. And yes, I'm going to add the extension, and it's going to download the extension for me. Yeah, so it has added it to it. It has added it to Brave for me. But if I come here, it still looks like this. So I will just have to refresh the page so that the extension can now handle it. Also. So this is what it looks like now. So uh, I think the next thing I'm going to do is to try and generate a model class because we need a model class. So Jason to that. Actually, that's how I actually get to find uh, those uh, those websites that you used to actually like convert from Jason to that. So this is what we're going to see. Uh, you have you have this particular Jason to that. Then this is actually uh, something that was written by the Flutter team itself. Then this is the other this is the other resource you can actually like use. So this instantly pass Jason in any language. Then there's wow. JSON to that. So I can choose any of the two. So I will just choose this one. Or you can still choose this one. But I'm choosing this one. So I'm going to just copy this. So I'm highlighting everything and I'm copying it. Why I'm highlighting everything to copy it is because if I try to just like pick a particular resource, I might just guess one error or the other. So to avoid that. I'm copying everything so that Jason doesn't actually, because if I try and do something like this, I might get an error. I might not get an error, but who knows? I can try and do something like this. I don't think it's going to work, but let's see. Okay, it doesn't work. No, it should work. It should work. It should work. Uh, I can do something from here. No, from here, actually. Down to here. And. I can paste this like this and I can tell it to generate a model. <laughs> I need to generate a model, but the problem with this is that if I if I generate this model like this, the way I'm going to make the API call is going to be different. It's going to be completely different from what is actually in the video. So in order to follow what's actually available, I'm going to just copy everything like this. And I'll paste it. If we have time, I'll still show you what it will actually like look like. If I just copied only that particular one, so we have this. This is our model class. So we copy our model class and we come down here. Uh, want to create a new file? I'll call it a model. Like that. So oh, sorry. Let me just see. Yeah. So that's it there. Uh, we have one error or the other. Uh, right. So, oh, this um, that's no safety one in me. I'm just going to try and fix that now. It's actually no safety issues with that in recent times. Uh, Excuse me. Okay. There's no safety issues, and I'm going to rectify each and every one of it before I continue. Well, most of you guys are not actually supposed to experience no safety issues because I think most of you did not get. I just recently got that 2.2 because I just got this laptop today. So I got the most recent version of that. That's why I'm getting this issue. Uh, okay. Okay. And that's one thing. So yeah, I think I have one more error that I'm saying. Where is it? Okay, yes. I just need to fix this and we are good to go now. We don't have any null errors. So we have our model class, we have our main dot dot, and I can actually show you what the main dot dot actually like looks like. So if I start an emulator, 
Yeah, so we're going to start a little later. The next thing we want to do is uh, make our API call. Yes, that's what we want to do. So we want to write um, code to make an API call. And we can make folders or we can decide to not make folders. So if I decide to make a folder and just call it API, it's actually, it's actually good to have folder structures or you can decide to not have folder structures if you do not want to. But if you don't have folder structures in big code bases, you're going to have serious issues like major issues because folder structures help you to organize things. So if I have a folder called API and you join the you join the project recently, you know that okay, anything that you want to, anything that is going to be about API calls should be within that folder. Then if I create something like a model. You will then you will know you also know that okay yeah that anything that you're looking for that is the model class should actually be inside here and i think i should move this to this place yeah so yeah move it and yeah so it has moved it so if i close this now you see that we have only this main dot that outside here the model folder then this is the api folder so i'm just going to create a new file and call it the api dot that yeah so we have our API for that uh, full, full uh, file now. So I just need to create a class. Uh, uh, so class, I'll call it API. So now within this class, we want to make the API call to, we want to make an API call. So essentially what we're trying to do is to recreate this scenario. Like we want that now to, or we want Flutter now to come and we want Flutter to come and make this API call. We want Flutter to come here and do exactly what, what, hello? Yeah, listening. Okay, so we want, we want Flutter to come and do exactly what we've done here. So as we, we take this URL and we just paste it here, like if I paste this URL here now, and I click and I click on enter. You see, it's actually going to load. After it loads, it brings up it brings up results. It brings up this result. So we want Flutter to come and do the same thing. But now we since Flutter is not like a web browser, Flutter has ways of actually doing things like this. So one of those ways is to actually like make API calls, and we need to get a package to be able to do API calls in Flutter. So if I go to pub the dev and yeah, so. Is actually going to open it up for me. Uh, we have packages we can use to make API calls. One of them is HTTP. Yeah, so there's HTTP. There's other. There's another package called um, Do. That is this one here. This package too can make API calls. A powerful HTTP client for that. We support interceptors. You can use it to make API calls. There's um there's another one there's another one for people that come from um, native um native backgrounds like people that build um native Android apps it's called Chopper. Um, let me just open this. So there yeah, there's two ways of installing this package. Well, I'm just going to do it the way I've always been doing it. Uh, so when it opens, you will see something like you will see that that pub add HTTP. This, if you are trying to add this to a that package, then uh, then there's a Flutter pub add HTTP. This, if you're trying to add it to your Flutter app, but well, I'm just going to copy this like this and I'm going to paste it here. So as if you copy it, so remember I said uh, your package is supposed to like line up with the Flutter. Like it's supposed to line up with this. If you move it outside here and you try and get the package, it's going to get the package, but you won't be able to use it because Flutter, Flutter will be like telling you that it didn't see where it didn't see the package. So the best place to have it is here, where it is in line with this Flutter and to your to your uh, Flutter project or your Dart project. It depends. You run two different commands. This was actually added to Flutter recently, I think. Flutter 2.1 or Flutter 2.0, that's 2.0, I mean, and Flutter 2.02. So you use a um, Dart pop, um, add HTTP to add to your Dart packages, and you use this to add to your Flutter packages or your Flutter apps 
or you could actually just copy this and do it the old fashioned way of just copying it and pasting it here. Then when you paste it here, you, you can just save this file. Or if you're an Android studio, if you're an Android studio, there's actually an option up here to actually like do this get packages. But I'm just going to save this and it's actually going to do the flutter pop get running for me by itself without me actually like doing it. Or another way you can actually do is to open your terminal. When you open your when you open your terminal, you can actually do something like flutter. You can do flutter pop get. And if you actually like, if I cancel this and I run this, uh, and I run this, you'll see that it's actually going to tell you running flutter pop get an example API. So what it's trying to get currently is this single package that we have here. Uh, I think because I'm on this call is actually going to take longer to finish running. Yeah, that's what I think is going to happen. It's going to take longer to finish running this. So I think I'll open, I'll open another pack. I'll open another filter app that actually like got the packaging already. Uh, let me open a new window. So this was the this was the one I already made before now. So this uh this is the pop spec YAML and we just have flutter. If you have this HTTP package, I've also gotten the URL launcher, and to get URL launcher is also the same thing. So you just come down here and you search for URL launcher. So URL. You are the launcher. So this is the package here. And if you open it, you should see this uh this is like this is an iOS specific setting. So if you're building on iOS, you'll have to add this to your iOS. I'm not building for iOS, I'm building on Android, so I don't need to make that change or I don't need to add that setting. So you still see that same uh command here, flutter pop, add URL launcher. And you observe that you can only do this particular command of flutter because this package is not available for that and how you know what a particular package on pop.dev is available for you'll see it's available up here so something like this flutter is available for flutter so it's available for android ios linux mac os web and windows but if you check if you check the http package uh, if you check the HTTP package now, you should notice something different. You see something like this. You see that native, native, and JS. Then you see uh, Flutter, Android, iOS, Linux, Mac OS, and Web. That's how you know if a package is going to work on your DAT, if you're writing just that, and if it's going to work on your DAT, if it's going to work on your Flutter. That's how you know. It's been specified up here so that you actually like know where your package can, what your package can run on. So this 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 um, has a this currently has a model. It currently has a, a model class, and the model class is just essentially the same thing. It's just that here the name is news articles, and there's a there's everything actually, but without the no shift too, because this this um two, these two packages and these two apps are not created at the same time, so. When, when I created the when I created this one, I, I wasn't using Flutter two point two point two, and the that's no safety was not compulsory, so I didn't need to use it. But here it is compulsory, so I needed to use it in this model API. That was where I had to put uh, this question marks and sometimes this exclamation mark too. So uh, that's that one. Then we have our main dot that this 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 code here currently runs is actually what I'm working. But I'm going to clear everything out and I'm going to restart writing everything from beginning again. So let me just clear this out. This is actually not part of the code. The code is actually commented. So I think I'm going to comment everything here and clear it out too. So no, not from there, from here. I'll clear everything out and leave on the scaffold. And I'm going to show you. So we have on the scaffold currently. And 
I'm going to remove this too. So I'm going to recreate it. So I'm going to remove here. Yeah. Remove this. I'm oh, sorry. I'm going to remove this. And I'm also going to remove this. Yeah. So, yeah. The app is actually looking good to go. So, and uh, save. So, I'm going to run this now. And we're just going to see a blank screen, actually. That's what we're going to see a blank screen. Let me make it full screen. So this here is going to show us a blank screen. On this side, we're going to see that it's just going to be a blank flutter screen that has nothing in it. So I'm going to come down here. And I actually created, I already created this class. So I'm just going to pull everything here too. Uh, yeah, so that's it. And the name of the class, I called it API. So class API, and it doesn't actually matter what the name of this class is. I can actually call it, uh, I can just call it Dumbo, uh, Dumbo. What matters is when you're calling it, how do you call it? Did you call your class correctly? So I'm going to remove all these imported packages too. Yeah, so we can, we can name our class anything essentially, but I think I'm just going to name it API or just name it news API so that it actually like correlates what we're actually trying to achieve with, the, with this current class. So the news API is going to be the name of the class. And now to make our API call. So when when you go when you go to like this link now, when you come here, you notice the uh, this here. Oh, this this should let me. This should actually not be. So if I come here. You notice that they say that this is going to be a get request. Uh, okay. So if I refresh the page, yeah, I should actually be okay now. Yeah. So I've refreshed the page and you see that they're going to tell me that this is a get request. So what the get request means is I don't have post one currently. I would have demoed what a, what a get request is and what a, a post request is like for. We are not a post request currently, so 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 this here is currently this slide is is currently called um, a get request, and we want to do that within Flutter. So we are going to take this URL and we are going to see how Flutter is actually going to use this. And another thing, when we created our model class, we also created a type for what our api call can be so i'm going to explain what that means so i can i can make an api call like this i can say future i can just say something like this future and i can say get uh get news get news and i can say i think and is that this is actually a valid function Essentially, what this is just saying is that it's going to get something, but it doesn't actually know what it is going to get. All it just knows is that all it knows is that it's going to get something in the future. That's what Flutter knows. It doesn't know what what type of thing it's going to get. So it's like just giving someone money and just telling them, okay, go out and just get me something. You didn't tell the person exactly what you're looking for. Maybe you need a bottle of water. Maybe you need a food or something else. You did not. You didn't mention. You just told. You just gave some money and just say, "Okay, go out and go and get me something." So you 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 wouldn't blame the person if the person comes back and doesn't actually bring back what you're expecting the person to bring back. Like if you were expecting water, and you didn't say, "I need water," and the person went out and got maybe. Uh, the person just went out and got candies. You wouldn't, you wouldn't blame the person for not bringing you what you want. So there's a way to actually tell Flutter that when you go out there, we want you to get a specific type of thing. So in our case, this model class here, currently, we want to, we are trying to get news articles. Like we want to get news articles, but 
the way this class is actually structured, they have a string of status, like this string of status here is just this. Uh, if you check here, if you check here, you see status, it says, okay, total results, 18,561. Then it has articles. And based on based off of what we've been doing here, what we actually want to see is the news articles. We don't want to see whether the status is okay or the result, the total result is 18,561. This is actually irrelevant to us. It doesn't matter. We don't care, actually. Like essentially, we don't care. We just want to get our news articles. So this is what we want to get. So I'm now going to come here and we're going to see that we have a list of articles. So this is what we're interested in, the list of articles. We don't care about the total results and we don't care about the list, um, the string. Uh, we, don't, we don't care about the status. So what we are going to do is to tell it that in the, in the future, you're going to come back and what you're going to bring back to us is going to be list. And that list is going to be of type articles. Uh, that's, yeah, articles. Yeah, news articles actually. So that's this. That's it here. So no, list of articles. Sorry, list of articles. So you will notice that it has imported this class, and I can show you what class this is. So if if you if you click on Control or Command, depending on the PC you're using. And you press L, you click like you do command and you write this in mouse, you stick it to that particular place. So you see that this is what I've imported. But what I imported this time around is uh, I'm trying to, this year, this this year is actually indicating to us that this is a list. This year indicates that this is a list. So I want to get the list of articles. So I'm going to try and get this class. But we don't have a class called list of article. What we have is a class called article, actually. But since the articles that the articles you're going to be getting is going to be a list. So when you get the list of articles, you have something like a source. You have under the source, you have something like an ID. So this here is the source object. Then these are other things within the article. So I'm going to show you that in the code. This is it here. So you notice that we have something like source, we have string of auto, we have string of title, string description, string URL, everything, every other thing here is a string. So well, once you've actually like seen what this, this is actually what we want to try and get. Like we're interested in what is going to be inside the article, but the article is going to be a list. So we can't tell, we can't tell someone that you should go and get us uh, water. And maybe there's a specific type of water you want to drink. Huh? You didn't tell the person that the, this is a specific type of water you want to get. So if you tell Flutter to just go and get articles, Flutter can just go there and maybe just pick one thing out of the entire articles here, which technically is not actually going to do because it's going to give you an error and tell you that what you're trying to get is a list and you're telling me to just get a single article. That's what Flutter is actually going to tell you. But you can actually like tell it that okay, since you're going to go there, we want we know that it is going to be a list, so we need you to get a list of articles, like a list of the articles, and it's going to do that for us. So we're telling it go there. When you get to that URL, we want you to get a list of articles. So I'm going to write the code that actually like looks like what I'm saying currently. So to be able to make an API call, we need to get um, we need to import the HTTP package. So import package yeah so there's something called uh, no don't worry don't worry package package http http slash http dot that but i want to import i want to import this as http and there's a specific reason for this if i say just http so I, for some reason i've actually forgotten how to do it the proper way like initially i knew i actually knew how to make um, an api call like uh so i'm going to call this variable call final call is going to be equal to i think i don't actually like know what the command is so i'm just going to import it as http because if i do that i can actually like just use everything within the class so if i take as http 
I can now do something like, since this is asynchronous and I'm going to actually like wait, because in futures you have to wait for something to actually like happen. So this person is going to go and get the water and you have to wait for the person to come back with what the person went to get, what, what the person went to get for you. So you are going to await it because it's something that's happening in the future. So or if you say you don't want to wait for it, I'm going to actually show you what's going to happen. So HTTP dot get and we need to use URI dot parse to parse the URI string or the URL string. URI stands for Uniform Resource uh, Identifier. URL stands for Uniform Resource uh, Locator. So for some reason, flood, the Flutter team feels that it is more important to parse the URI, the identifier as a URL. Because be, before, before now, before I think in HTTP 0.1.2.0, you actually pass in the URL. But now we have to pass in the URI. So I don't know. This, maybe they have their reasons for making these decisions. I don't actually know why. So if I format this document so that it looks nicer. Uh, now we've told it the you're going to you're going to go to this URL, and what you want to get from this URL is going what we want. Okay, okay what well, what this function is going to give back to us is going to be of type list article, but when it actually goes to this URL, this specific URL is going to get a. Uh, this is going to get everything we are seeing here. So it will get the status of okay. It's going to get total results of this, and it's also going to get a list of articles. But now we want to make it specific that we want to tell it oh, so when you get this stuff, where you get there, you should actually just give us only the articles. So the way to do that is uh, to use an if check. And first of all, what I'm doing an if check is so that. If, if it goes to the API and it, everything is actually okay, because I can actually show you when everything is not okay. So if I change this URL to one, because the URL works with your dates. So if I change this to last thing first, this should be yesterday. So if I click on enter, you should see an error. This status, the status code of this is not going to be 200, I think. I might be able to show you what the status code would be like. So, so. I should be able to show what the status code is like. I can capture it here. If I was on Postman, I would have been able to demo this to you. What's the status codes are like when you have an error, but they are not showing me here. So I will just work with what is actually available. And I can actually show you HTTP status codes. We have a uh, bunch of HTTP status codes. So HTTP response codes. We have um, 200. So all these responses, so we have 200 of OK, 201 of created, 202 of accepted, 203 of non-authoritative non information. But in this case, the one we are more interested in is um, 200 OK. So this request has succeeded, meaning that the success depends on the HTTP method get. And you will note that we are doing get in this particular request. There's head, there's puts, there's post, there's trace. So we are doing get. So we want to check that if uh, this is this variable here now is holding everything that has happened here. So I don't need to come and start checking for this here. I will just use the variable and just do if call dot. Now you're, you're going to see that I'm having hash code runtime a stream catch error dot then timeout to string when complete, no such method. But this is not what I actually want. I'm supposed to get something called a status code. And you will notice that if I change this to wait, if I wait this now and I click on, if I do call and I do dot now, you'll see that it changes, it changes my options for me. So what I'm interested in now is the status code. And I want to check if the status code is equal to 200. If the status code is equal to 200, then I want it to do different things. So status code of 200 would mean, okay, this person went went out and at the, at the mall, the person found out that what you actually want to buy is available. 
So when this person, when he finds out that this thing is available, so what next should they do? We can leave this code like this is actually working, but it doesn't make sense that I get to the mall, uh, a human being will actually like know what to do. Okay, if you get to the mall and it's actually available, you just buy it and come back. But the computer doesn't know, so you have to still be specific about it. You can't just say if the status code is equal to 200 and you leave the code block empty, the computer does not know what to do. So the next thing we want to do is to, first of all, we want to deserialize the JSON. So final, and I'm going to call this variable JSON is equal to JSON decode. And this JSON decode actually comes from this that convert library. So if I remove this that convert, you'll see that we are going to have an error. Yeah, there's the error here. So if I do a quick fix, it's going to tell me, it's going to ask me if I want to import. Yeah, so that convert. So I will just import that convert and it will go away. So our source of data now is going to be this, uh, what do you call it? Call dot body actually. There are other things here, but it's the body that actually contains what you want. So we're just going to leave it at that and when we get um, when we get this body, the next thing we we'll actually want to do is to return what we've actually like gotten. But currently, if I said I should, if I say I should return this JSON, which I can't actually return the JSON. So if I try returning JSON, uh, if I try and return the JSON, it's actually going to fail, and it's going to it's supposed to fail. Okay, it's, it's of type dynamic, so it doesn't actually like matter. It doesn't matter because dynamic can actually be list of article. That that's um that's them. That's for you. If it's of type dynamic, it's going to be like it can return any type, essentially. So if it is dynamic, it can return a list of article. It can return only list. It can return article. It can return API. It doesn't really matter. But that's not what we want to return. But there's something. There's something. I don't know. I can't actually print this out for you here to see, unless I've actually like completed the code up to the UI. Then you can actually see what's going on here. So when I complete the code to the UI, we are going to see everything that is actually happening at this endpoint here. But I'm just going to do what I want to do. So I'm going to return, and what I'm going to return is going to be. Uh, I'm going to return. Uh, I'm going to return a news article. Yeah, news, news articles dot from JSON. And I'm going to pass this JSON and I'm going to do dot articles actually. And I'm going to close this. And why I'm doing this like this is because of, uh, if you check this model class, you notice that this news articles actually like deserializes it for me. So it has a place where it picks the status. It has a place where it picks total results. It has a place where it picks um, articles. So I can do something like, if I do something like this, dot, um, if I do something dot status, it's going to be an error. And it's going to tell me that the, the, a type of, a value of type string cannot be returned from the method get news if it has a return type of future these articles. And it, if I say, okay, Maybe this one should work. I say total results. It's still going to be the same thing. The only thing I can actually return from this function currently is articles. And I'm going to explain why I'm returning list of articles. So the next thing I want to do is error handling. And for some reason, I actually started this code off wrongly. Uh, let me just correct myself. So yeah. So I need to use a try block, try. If I just put the try block here, I can paste this code back inside here and I can undo. So there are a bunch of errors that can actually occur, but the only one I'm interested in is when the user is not doesn't have internet connection. So I'll say uh, try on socket, on socket exception, yeah, socket exception. Excuse me. I'm oh, sorry. A socket exception. A socket exception. I want to do this. Uh, no. Right. Give me a sec. I will just take this out first. Uh, yeah. 
So there's the okay. Yeah, so this is correct now. Yeah. So I'll put the try block again. I'll say try. And this try block doesn't actually like sit on its own because it's going to tell you that try block must be followed by an on catch or finally close. Try adding either a catch or finally close or remove the try statement. So I need to add on. And what I want to check for is just if the user is not connected to the it's not connected to internet. So on socket exception, this. So I will just put the working code inside here. So this is the working code. Uh, what's going on? Okay, yeah, the if statement actually has its own bracket. So yeah, this if statement here. So to actually like see the color of my brackets, there's a something called colorizer. Yeah, bracket pair colorizer. I use it to see color of my brackets. Like I said, this laptop is not so I didn't have that package installed. Uh, so it's currently installed. So you notice that my brackets are now being colored and everything is now looking different. So I can untrack. Okay, so this pair is with this pair. So if you see this is yellow and this is yellow, and actually like shows you where this starts from and where it ends. So this line shows me where this bracket started from and where it ended. So on socket exception, uh, I already wrote this failure class. And the failure class is not something very, very interesting. It just has um, a final string and a constructor and this override method here. I'm sorry. This override method here that actually like does a, the override method actually like returns the message. So the two string method just returns the message. That's essentially what's there. So I'm going to say an exception is true this failure and this failure is going to be what they call it message okay let me put this in failure class first to put it and i can answer message and i wouldn't say you're not connected to the internet you're not connected to the internet why? And maybe we are going to add a surface with, uh, no, this is a surface. Uh, yeah, what is document? Right? Uh, if there are any other exceptions, uh, I don't think I need to worry about them. Or uh, essentially, I will just catch them. I will catch them and I'm going to throw them as failures too. So I'll throw the failure. Uh, and just say an error of code, an unknown error of code, unknown error of code. Yeah, so that will be that. Uh, I don't think I need to put an else statement because, well, there are, there are times when you want to put your else statement, like I can say else if, um, if, uh, else if, okay, else if actually takes, uh, it actually takes a condition too. So I'm going to pass in the condition and then say, maybe if the call, the status code is not equal to 200. So if it's not going to be 200, then maybe we will just throw another failure. Uh, oh, we might just say you should check the URL. Just check the URL. That's what we are going to say uh, from our these documents. Uh, and from our types of issues. That's nice. Uh, okay. Yeah, so this should be correct. So what this what this error is is something you can actually like pass in here as the message. But I want to write my own custom message that is actually going to be shown to the user because sometimes you can actually like send this error and 
it's going to be one long string of ununderstandable stuff to a normal user. So it doesn't make sense. So we've told we've told them Flutter that you should go to this API. And when it gets to the API and the API sends it, and the API sends it a 200 uh, status code, meaning that everything is okay. Like we've already seen here, we've seen that 200 means okay. If it sends back to us that everything is okay, then what we should do is to, we should get the JSON and we should decode the JSON. And this JSON decode, what it actually does, okay, I know what I'm going to do, I'll print. I'll print call dot body. Call dot body. Yeah. And I'm going to show you the difference between the both of them, I promise. So I'm going to also print the JSON too. So JSON. We are going to see the difference between both of them. So I'll just comment them out. And I'm going to uncomment them when we actually like run this app and everything is working. But then told you that when it gets oh. Yeah, when it gets there and the um, status code is 200, it should first take in the JSON and it should decode the JSON. So what the JSON decode actually does is, and so if you observe, if you observe, uh, this stuff here is actually a string. This body is a string. So what this JSON decode does is that it takes, it takes the string and converts it to that object. And I'm going to show you that I'm not going to turn continue speaking all the grammars that I know about it. I'm going to show you what it actually like looks like. So you get the call dot body and you, you get the string Then This is actually going to become, it's going to convert this um, string to JSON to that object. And when you've converted it to that object, you can now use the other that object to perform operations on it. So this here is an operation on the that object. So news articles is a that object and this is the from JSON method. That actually told you is a, a named constructor. At least that's what they are being. That's what they are called in that. And when I tell, when I come, when I've actually used this that operation on perform this that operation on this JSON, what I want to get out of this, uh, what I want to get out of this JSON is just the articles. It's just the articles of it. So news articles will come and perform its operation. So if I check this, if I click Control, click on this. I should see this class. So you see the from JSON method, it has it has status, it has results, it has articles. So I'm telling it, don't give me the status, don't give me the results. I just need the articles that are within the news articles itself. And that's what it's going to give to me. So if if you it, it, it should return this if everything is successful. But if it's not successful, it should just tell me, it should throw a field into it and tell me to check the URL. Then if the person is not connected to the internet, you should tell me that you're not connected to the internet. Why? Then if any other error that we don't understand for any reason why it's occurring or code, we should just tell the user that an error occurred. So if if um, the error if the error occurs, then we are going to know that everything actually like it actually went through everything and it came down here and it just told us that oh the error occurred. So we are going to go to the UI. So currently, what we just have is a first page, and we just have a scaffold, and that's it here. We just have this empty screen, and I can still I can still show you the I can still show you the um this right. So I can just do something like maybe an app bar. I can say app bar. Uh, I can just put an app bar and just say title. Title is going to be uh, okay. Title is actually a widget. It's not uh, just a text. So I can put yes. Yeah, so title text, and I'll just say news. Yeah, that sounds about right. So if I just refresh this now, you should see she had an app bar for us here, and it's just in news. So I want this to be in the center. So I'm going to say uh, not not here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's actually there. I can just say center title. There's actually an argument called center title, and I'll set it to true because it's a bool. So it takes in true or false. So for my this document, for uh, my document, I'm sorry, my this document. So if I save this and I run it again, 
we see that this should be in the middle now. So this is news. And now we want to pass something into the body. So what we want our body to be is, I want our body to be the list of those articles. So what we want to have um, is something like all the articles. So this now, we want to have this. Well, because we've converted this to that object, we don't need to go through the stress of and picking them one after the other, like, okay, we want only the author, the, we need only the authors and the title. That already has done that for us. So we'll just be using that object to just pick what we want. But essentially what we want to see is something like author because this source, we don't actually need it because the information is not all that valuable, unless maybe you want to see who the news is from, like which, which, um, which, um, which news company published the news, that's what you want to see. But I think, seeing who the author is, the title, the title of the news, or maybe the description of it and the URL to the news is actually enough for anybody. So that's what we are going to work with. Um, first of all, we need what we call a future builder. And what the future builder does is that it takes futures and build them into UI for you. So it takes two arguments. We have one that's going to be the builder and the other one that's going to be the future. So first of all, we need to initialize our class here. So I'm going to do news. Okay, I think I changed the name of this API class. So it's news API. So news API. News API is uh, equal to news API. I'm going to call it news API is equal to news API, news API. And this here is just me initializing the class. There's nothing, there's nothing fancy about anything you're seeing here. It's just initialization of the class. So the next thing I want to do is to do, so the future we want to use is this. So this here is our future. So this get news here is the future because we've checked this um, future, this article, like we are, is a future that has a type he wants to get, but essentially it is a future. At the base level, what it is is a future. So what we are going to just do now is um, use API. Use API dot uh, get news. Oh yeah, get news. So there is it here. Is a future, and I've given it to this. And this builder here takes um, it takes two arguments, and one of them is the context. The other is going to be a snapshot. And the snapshot is just what is it seeing currently? Like after if well, after it has after it has made the future call, what is it actually seeing? So uh, we're going to have this here. Yeah. And we can now do if we can now run multiple if statements within this builder here. So I can now say if the snapshots dot uh as data and i cannot return something but i want to i want to first check if it doesn't have data so if it does not have data it should uh we can just return a text no yeah just return a text and we should say no news available And the next thing we want to do is to say uh, if um, we want to check if um, it has news articles. So, uh, no, I want to return the last thing that it up today. So, I want to check for else if error. Else if snapshots dot has error. So, what I want to do is to return. And return the text, and this text will have um snapshots, yeah, snapshot dot data dot error, huh? yeah, snapshot of data because the data is going to have is going to be an error, so that's why it's just going to be there. So the last thing I want to return would be a uh, 
a i'm going to return a list view builder and why i'm using this view builder is because we are going to get the list and i don't want to be the one writing the code to organize my list so i'll use a list view the builder and the item builder is also like the future builder it takes two things but what it takes is actually a context and an index an index is just to identify which where where certain things are on the list so context and the very next thing is going to be index so i can just use an arrow function because the next thing i want to return is going to be a list type i don't want to i don't want to check i don't want to use if to check different things so yeah so the list type so i just need to close that out then another thing i need is um, the item count so item count so item count is going to come from uh, snapshots yeah snapshots dot data dot length uh i'm doing something wrong here i'm actually doing something wrong now uh okay i need to correct i need to change something about my api call mm. Okay, it's actually this is correct. Oh, sorry. You see, I'm supposed to correct something. So I'm telling you that I'm going to get a list of type article. And why this is important is uh, connection. Why I'm doing this currently is because of, wow, that was not it. Oh, uh, man. I think I need to check uh, my own code again and see what's actually going on because I've forgotten what I've did to an extent. Shoot, 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 shoot. Yeah, so this is it here. Snapshots, future list of articles, then this, the that. So if it has zero, snapshot the data, that's a string, the data, that's the string. Yeah. So here I'm just going to do snapshot the data, snapshot the data dot length. Yeah, that's what I just need. Uh, so the list style just let me format this code so that it looks better in there so we have a format documents yeah so list style list style has a bunch of stuff you can use so we have a leading now the leading is actually where you have like i don't know i don't know where i can actually show you what the list style looks like but i think from the previous video you noticed that there was a circle avatar like something that just a, a small circle showing an image so that's what the leading actually contains so i'm going to say circle avatar again uh, a circle avatar takes a background image and the background image i want to use here is going to be network image network image and i'm going to pass in uh, snapshots the data then I can use the index, and this index is this one that we passed in here. So I can do index, and I can use dot the dot um, operator, and then say URL to image. But there are cases where this URL will actually be null, and since we are not using null safety, I have to actually like account for when it is null. So I'll say if this is equal to null, I can now pass in an empty string. And if I pass in an empty string, it's just going to show me blue. So if I then if if it is not null, then it should actually supply this again. So next, if if um if it's not if it's not null, it actually gives me the image. But if it is null, it should just pass in an empty string, and we should just see blue. That that particular space is just going to be blue. So I'm going to do this again for. I'm going to do this again for the title. Uh, 
So the title, I'm going to just use the title of the news article itself. So it's going to be a text. Text. Um, we are going to have, um, no, snapshots. The data. Dot, uh, no, we're not using dots there. We're just going to use the index. We're not going to do the title. We could actually account for if it is null too. So I'm just going to copy this. And I'm going to paste this here. So in case you're wondering what this actually is like, I'm uh, oh, sorry. What this, this here actually is like, what I'm actually doing, like you're wondering why is he writing something with a question mark and data is putting a colon. It's called a ternary operator. So a ternary operator is a, an operator that actually like checks in between two things and returns, he returns right on the, he returns, he returns through on the right side and falls on the left side. So if, so essentially what it is doing is it to check this, it to check for this. It is just like writing an if statement where I say, if this is this, you should do that. And if this, if it is not that, you should do the other thing. So essentially it is like saying that if this snapshot of data is equal to null, it should return, it should return an empty string. But if it is not null, it should return the, it should return, you are, it should return the title here, not the URL image. It should return the title. So it's going to check, it's going to check this condition if this condition is true, it does this. If this condition is false, it's going to do this. So in the in the event where like this is actually like false, we are going to get this. No, yeah, where it is false, we are going to get this. So most likely at every point in time during like when we run the app, this is actually going to come up as false. So we are going to see the title of the news article. So the next thing we want to see is uh, the subtitle and the subtitle is where I usually like to put the author of the news article. So I'm going to say snapshots the data, the index again, as usual. The no, not here. Outside it, we have dots author. So there are even there are cases where you can actually like find out that the author of the news was actually actually came up as no. So we we'll do the same thing again. We just use binary operators to check that. So, yep. Well, we're going to pick this and place this here. And we're going to use. Yeah, so that will be the auto. Then the last thing I want to do is, you know, we want to actually, like, when you see the news, you can actually, like, scroll over to where the news is to go and read it. So, you want to go to the web browser to go and read it. Although there's actually an option being provided that. You can actually like see the news article. So if you see this last term, um, you see this last stuff here, you see something like content, and you see the beginning of the news where it says Scott Thatcher and his wife Angela were born in California and love and love the son kids golden state, but two months ago they sold their home, packed up their belongings, and traveled 8,700 miles. And you see plus 12,000 characters, meaning that there's more to it. And we can actually like want to view that, but we have to do that with navigation. But I choose not to do that. Well, I can actually show you how to do it, but I'm not going to do that. I would, I would rather show you how to take yourself to the web browser using the URL launcher, since you have the URL launcher available. So the next thing we want to do is, uh, we're going to put something called a trailing. A trailing is going to be of icon button. Yeah, icon button. And the icon button takes um, two arguments. One is going to be the icon, and the other is going to be the unpressed. So that will be that. And the icon I want to give it is going to be icon in brackets icons dot launch. Yeah, launch. So it's going to be one nice little article. It's going to be one nice little icon like that. That shows you as it shows you launch. It shows you the launch. Don't don't worry. Don't worry about it. You're going to see. It. So, in the unpressed function, when you click on the button, what do you want to happen? So that's what the unpressed function is going to be all about. So I think it's going to be asynchronous too because it has to wait for something to happen too. And 
I am so lazy, so what we are going to do is I'm just going to come to GitHub. Yep, and I'm going to go down here and just copy everything that I'm seeing here. So like this, I'll just take everything here. Uh, yep. Mm, no, not there. Yeah, and I'll just paste it here. And if I okay, I just need to import the package. So import library package are uh, No, sorry. So yeah, so I'll just highlight this and import this and it should clear those errors out. So format this document again so that it's looking nice. And I think we should hot we should hot restart this time because we've made a lot of changes. So we need to hot restart this time around. And first of all, we should see this here. But if it doesn't work, we're going to actually like figure it out. So the app is running. It says no news available. Now it brings up this news. But I think it's bad experience to actually see something like no news available. So I'm going to change this and say when it doesn't have data, what it should actually do is to show us a circle. Pro. I will put it. I will use a circle progress indicator and just do this. So I will hot restart. But you'll notice that there's a way the circle progress indicator is going to be. It's going to be like the whole script. It's going to be weird. So you see it here. It doesn't look nice. So we need it to be somewhere that is central. So what I'll do is I'm going to wrap this widget. So if you're if you're using Android Studio or VS Code, if your if your widget is actually highlighted like this, and you click on this um this um this bulb icon here. If you click on it, you can actually see other widgets you can actually like this. So currently I want to just wrap it with the center. So I'll wrap it with the center and I'll save and I'll hot restart again. I will just see the icon in the middle this time around. Yeah, so this is looking better. Like this is what you want to see on your news article, not an icon loading up here. So now you will notice that some of these icons are actually like blue. And like I said, you see blue icons when it can't actually like get the image. So those ones it could get the images. You're seeing them, those it couldn't get the images. They're just blue. That's also what's going to happen. So now we should test out if this is actually going to work. But it's supposed to work essentially. So if I click on this, it should take me to a web browser. Excuse me. Oh, yeah, I can hear you. Okay. I, I think Zoom keeps us off every 45 minutes or something. You said? I think Zoom kicks us off every 45 minutes. Oh, okay. So I should share my screen again. I don't, okay, I can just share my screen. Okay. So this is the last part where I'm actually like showing you how to use the app because essentially we finished that in the app. There's, there's nothing else to do here again. This is just like the final app. So I should click on this button and should take you to where you should have this. But since I'm using that in the moment currently, I'm getting errors down here telling me I can't actually like do it. So I should check what the error is. I can say you can't want to this URL. So it's going to launch this particular link. So I'll turn another one. Uh, I think it's going to come to any of it. Let me, let me close it. I'll stop the application and I'm going to run the application again. And I'm going to see what's going to happen now. So I also noticed that the canary of Proto is used here. So if it can launch this URL, we should launch. If it can launch the URL, we should just try and tell you that it can launch this particular URL. And this is the error up here. So this particular error is says can't launch, but it's not the, the error is not important. So you see it here, it does you have one in that section. It is not the but you should see the proper item is also being displayed. Uh, so I don't know, Doug, I don't know if you actually like have any questions you want to ask. 
Hello? Hello? Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, so I don't know. Do you, have any, do you have any questions you want to ask? I like it. I'm just taking it all in. Um, okay, so I think the airport should be okay. Well, I doubt it's actually going to work. And one of the reasons is going to work to work. It's one of them is that it's running on an energy call. So it does have most issues that are not been there. Like most of the issues it has are not been tested out. So it's going to have errors then. And that's, but I think that's the only reason it's actually not going to work. If it was on a physical device, it's actually not working in a web browser for me. So I think it's open in a web browser now. So it's just my process of wasting my time this time around. But, it's not for you, but I think I should stop this. Let me stop it. I'll stop it and I'm going to close up the pixel. Yeah. I'm going to change the device I want to use. I've changed to Linux. So this this has actually like changed. I can change to Chrome, this web, this desktop, this mobile. So I'm going to change to Linux and I'm going to review the app on Linux. So if you look at I'm going to use to Linux so that the piece of Linux and I can download here my PC. You'll see, you'll see the desktop app and I'm going to use the desktop app itself. Uh, so I don't know, is there any question you have to ask? Not really. It's just there's a, there's a weird noise on your on your background. Okay, I'm not going to actually like the show that. I think maybe it's not going to find it. Find is actually fault to some extent. Too. Uh, it gets to the Android. No, it's not supposed to be to Android again. That's not what you're supposed to be. No, I think because uh, I have an Android device running here, it's not the preference to it if I take the preference to my Linux, which I just selected to be to. So, what I'm going to do is, uh, uh, I'm going to just close out of this and I'm going to switch this off. Yeah. So, I'm going to shut that down. <laughs> Um, I'm going to be able to so far, uh, I'm going to give it to Linux. Is that how I do it? No, it doesn't. It's something to use a double dash. Okay, so. So, uh, yeah, never leave. So, I want to run on the device. Uh, yeah, so this is it. So, I'll just do this. So, this is here. I'm going to run it now. So, I should do it to my Linux desktop here. So, it doesn't go into the next desktop. So if you notice that uh, my Android is actually like not slowly shutting down, like it's, it's been shutting down for a way too long now. So I can actually close up to this and it's going to tell me to save the state. And I don't want it to save that state. So what I'll do is to start, uh, I think what I'll do is to start um, 
the I'm going to open my door studio. I'm going to show you what you can do if you want to stop the handle. To, if you want to stop it, okay, just the app, it has actually built. So it just only the name is app right. So now if I click on this, you should have my web browser for me here. That's it. It opens the web browser and takes it to the next this thing is here. So I think that that's actually like done. That's actually the lot of app currently that's running on my Ubuntu as a desktop app currently and not as a mobile app. But it's the same code. My really is running on Android. It's just that I'm having issues with my media for running on web. I'm having issues with my media for opening the web browser. So it's not actually like an issue when it comes to the code because it's the same code. It's just running on Linux currently. So I think with that, you can see we actually like uh, done. So I should show you, let me just show you what I was talking about. Yeah, I'm still going to show you the stuff that I spoke about in the, in the code. So if you understand, we actually like refuses. I'm not saying this is actually a good solution, but I understand the kept that shut down for way too long. And I could do it for it. And if I try to it again, so. If I can open it again, you'll see. If I open it now, you'll see that it is going to start up and it's still going to be shutting down. And I don't want to see continue being like this way so, because it's going to continue this thing like that. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel it again. When I cancel it, I'm going to come to Android Studio, go to AVD, this called an AVD Manager. If I click on the AVD Manager, you see how that's all in the device. So, I'll come here and I'm going to click on the right data. And after it is, I see it as a distance from 9.6 to 1.6, and I can cancel this. I can call that a one of the because I don't usually work with my best to do it. I have sentiments, so I can allow this code again. Okay, first of all, I have to start the emulator. So if I start the emulator now, I should start up again from the beginning. This code does what it looks like. If you're talking, I can't hear you. Hello. 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 Hello to you. Hello to you. I, I think we lost his audio. Yes. He just sent him a message.
Is it? Alright, from Delhi here, that's it. I think I'm going to stop the video. Yeah, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop recording now. It does. You know, let's go here. Yeah, I can hear you guys. I can't. So. Hello?